Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again, and in this video, I'm going to talk about the DAX filter function. Now, it's been a while that we have done any DAX function so far. Why don't we actually start with this one? All right, let's just take a look at the syntax of the filter function, see what parts do you write inside of that, and let's just see how it works. So in terms of syntax, you just provide the filter function with two parts. The first part of the filter function is the name of the table, whatever table you're trying to work with, and the second part of the filter function is the condition. Now note that whatever condition you write is going to be tested out in every single row of the table. So it's going to test the condition in the first row, then the second row, then the third row, then the fourth row, so on and so forth. All the rows that match the condition which the where the answer is equals to true those rows are going to be kept and the other rows are then removed note that the output of the filter function is not a single or a scalar value it's actually a table so once you kind of commit to the filter function it delivers you a table not really a single value now there are a few other things that I want you to remember when you're writing the filter function. The first is that the table that you write as the first part of the filter function can be a physical table, something that you can actually see inside of your data model, or it can be a virtual table, something that you created on the fly. Now, the other thing that you have to remember is that the condition that you write inside of the filter function has to deliver you a true slash a false as an output. If it doesn't deliver you a true or a false output, uh, those conditions cannot be tested in every single row of the table and hence your filter function is not going to work fine. So that was the filter function. Quick summary of the syntax. Let, now let's just go over to Power BI and see how the filter function actually works. All right, I'm in Power BI and I have two very simple tables loaded here. I have the sales table and then I have the calendar table. Both these tables are linked using one to many relationship using the date column of the two tables. Now, remember what I said about the filter function. The filter function actually delivers you a table as an output, not a scalar value. And we do have the ability in Power BI to be able to create a table. So I'm just going to go over to the table tools right here and make a new table. And I will write the filter function and the filter function is going to actually deliver me a table. So let's just call this table as a dummy table. And I'm going to start writing the filter function. You can see that the filter function is actually asking me that which uh, table would you like to filter? So maybe I'd like to filter my sales table. And the condition that I want to write is that give me all the rows of the sales table where the amount is greater than, let's say, $20. So I'm just going to write maybe the amount column, which is one of the columns in the sales table, is greater than equals to 20 is what I write. Now you can see that I have written the name of the table as the first part the column and the condition this actually becomes a condition the condition is going to result in a true and false this condition is going to be tested for every single row of the table that i have mentioned here and in return i am actually going to get a full sales table but only those rows that match the filter condition so these are all the rows where the sales amount is definitely greater than twenty dollars and you can take a look at that now as of now remember that i told you about the filter function that the table that you write could actually be a physical table that you can see inside of your data model. Sales is one of the physical tables that I can take a look at. The other way to write the filter function is to write uh, a virtual table where you create a table on the fly and then use that inside of your filter function. So why don't we actually create a table the problem that I'm trying to solve here is that I would like to get all the dates where the sales amount was more than $50,000. Remember that I'm just trying to get a table of all the dates where the amount was greater than $50,000. So I'm just going to create, first of all, a table which contains only the unique dates. And that is done by the values function. If you don't uh, know what the values function does, I will just leave a link to a video where you can take a look at what the value function actually does. So I'm just going to go over to the sales table and just pick up my order date. And I mentioned that column and just writing that column inside of the values function is going to take off any duplicates in that column. Now this actually delivers me a one columnar table. In that one columnar table, I want to keep only those dates where the sales amount is greater than $50,000. Now that's my table and in that table, what condition do I want to test? I want to test that the total sales measure that I have created, which is nothing but the sum of the sales amount column, should be greater than or equal to $50,000. And that's what I write. I commit to that and I press enter and I will get only a one columnar table of all the dates where the amount was greater than or equal to $50,000 and the output that I have is only of 133 rows where the amount was greater than or equal to $50,000. Now let's just go ahead and take a look that if you had to write a filter function in a measure as of now we've been creating a table of that but what if you had to create a measure and then see how the filter function works. All right, I have a very simple pivot table here which is where I have the year, the quarter and my total sales presented right here. 
And maybe I'm just trying to create the same table that I just created a while ago, which is where I kept all the dates, which were more than $50,000 in sales per day. Maybe I want to total them up and I want to take a look at against every single quarter. What is the total of all the days which are greater than or equal to 50,000? So I'm just going to create a measure for that and let's just see how that works. I'm just going to right click on the sales table, make a new measure. And once I make a new measure, I'm just going to give it a name sales greater than 50K. Now I'm going to start writing the filter function in the filter function. Uh, I have to make the name of the table. So what table do I have to work with? I do not really have to work with the entire sales table. I will do the same thing. I will use the values function and I will use the calendar date here because I want to just run the measure against every single date. So I will say that uh, go in every single row of the calendar date, which is where you have one date per row and then against every single date why don't you just check for total sales if the total sales is greater than or equal to 50,000 or not now the problem is if I just write that part of the measure which is where I have the name of the table and I have my filter conditions mentioned correctly and if I commit to this formula this formula is actually going to give me an error why because the filter function actually delivers you a table as an output it doesn't really deliver you a scalar value and once you're creating a measure the measure has to deliver a a single scalar value if I commit to this formula and if I just drag that formula to my pivot table this is actually going to give me an error because the filter function delivers you a table so how do I actually work with this formula to be able to generate a scalar value what I can say is something like this I can say calculate and I can say that I would like to calculate my total sales but the total sales is going to be calculated only for these particular values that I that I generate through the filter function the filter function actually generates a table which is a one columnar table of all the dates and for all these dates which are now filtered where the sales is more than 50,000 I would like to calculate my total sales value that is all that I do the second part of the calculate function asks you for a table we have provided a table it should work absolutely fine I'm just going to commit to this formula press enter and this absolutely starts to work fine in my pivot table all right, that was all about the filter function. Uh, quick summary of the filter function. The filter function has got two parts, the name of the table and the condition. The condition that you write runs itself in every single row of the table. It's like an iterator, the first row, the second row, the third row, and only the true rows are kept and the false rows are ignored. The filter function does return you a table. It does not return you a single value output. And then you can use that filter function against any other function that accepts a table and create a single value output in case you're trying to work with a measure. Now, I do want to leave you with two good practices of working with the filter function. Good practice number one is that try to use the filter function on a dimension table as compared to the fact table. A fact table could have a lot of rows and iterating over a lot of rows could just slow down the measure. That is part number one. The second uh, good practice that I'd like to leave you is that in the filter function, when you provide the name of the table, try to have a leaner table as compared to a fatter table. Now you can use different functions to make your table leaner, just keeping the columns that you actually need to filter and then removing the other columns. Those are the two good practices. That's all about the filter function. And if you have any questions around this, please feel free to put down a comment. I'll be glad to reply. In the end, a quick shout about my DAX and my Power Query course. In case you're starting out and you would want help to learn DAX in a more structured way, Way, learn the fundamentals first and then proceed on to solving more complicated, more challenging problems of your own data. I will highly recommend that you take a look at my course. It's going to be highly beneficial. Thanks so much for watching this and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers. Bye.